Yo, what's going on Jigsaw Land? It's Thomas DeLauer and today I'm talking about inflammation and ketosis. We have to understand exactly how this works because way too many people, especially now in the beginning of the year, are looking at ketosis as a diet strategy, but they're a little bit nervous because there's some claims out there that say that it's not super healthy. But I want to take a look at inflammation and give you the facts. So let's get to it. A good marker of general health is something known as inflammation. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I'm always talking about inflammation not being good. Quite honestly, the simplest way to put inflammation is it is really the main indicator of disease in the body. High levels of inflammation are associated with just about every disease state. So it's safe to say that high levels of inflammation equal poor health. So let's talk about how ketosis affects inflammation in general and how ketone bodies and ketone metabolism when you're in ketosis can actually reduce inflammation and not just a little bit, quite dramatically. So first off, let's start with the very, very, very simple thing. And that's the fact that when you're in ketosis, you're not consuming sugar. This is very, very cut and dry, very boring, not super sciencey. The fact is when we're processing sugar and we're utilizing glucose and sugar as a form of metabolism, it is very, very stressful on the body and it triggers inflammation. Okay. Glucose metabolism and sugar metabolism in general produces a lot more of what is called reactive oxygen species. This is spare oxygens that end up floating around through the body, oxidizing things, oxidizing minerals, and making the body toxic. We don't want that. So obviously when we start reducing that by getting ketones in the picture and getting sugar out, we're going to reduce inflammation first and foremost. So the cool thing is we have to look at this in two different parts. Step one, we're eliminating something that triggers inflammation in the first place, but now we're introducing a ketone body which has anti-inflammatory properties in and of itself. So let's get into that. When you are in ketosis, your body produces these things called ketone bodies. Ketone bodies are things like acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone. Now here's the thing. Acetoacetate isn't studied a whole lot as it pertains to inflammation, but beta-hydroxybutyrate is the one that is researched and studied the most. The main reason that this beta-hydroxybutyrate reduces inflammation within the body is by acting upon something known as the NLRP3 inflammasome. Okay, the NLRP3 inflammasome is a very versatile, very broad series of oligomers that triggers inflammation or measures inflammation within the body. You see, we have lots of different inflammasomes. Usually, inflammasomes are working with different areas of the body. You have inflammasomes that are going to be surveying the liver or surveying the brain, and they're going to trigger inflammation or sense inflammation in given areas of the body. But the NLRP3 inflammasome is the big, overarching, broad, versatile inflammasome that triggers inflammation throughout the entire body. So that if the NLRP3 inflammasome is on high alert or activated, then you have a high levels of chronic inflammation throughout the course of the body. Well, studies have shown that beta-hydroxybutyrate in and of itself and the metabolism that is involved with beta-hydroxybutyrate dramatically reduces or deactivates the NLRP3 inflammasome, which therefore means that you have a significant reduction in inflammation. And we're not talking about inflammation in one specific area, we're talking about general systemic inflammation, which leads me into the next thing. Ketones burn cleaner. Okay, let's give you a quick breakdown of how metabolism works in the body in a cell. In a cell, you have about 32 things that are called mitochondria. You have 32 mitochondria that process glucose or they process fats or ketones as a source of fuel. When these mitochondria process glucose, it is a very dirty process. It works, obviously our bodies are designed to burn glucose as well, but it's not clean. It produces a lot of reactive oxygen species, it produces a lot of toxins, and it doesn't yield a ton of energy. But when our bodies start utilizing ketones as a source of fuel, in the absence of glucose, it's much, much cleaner, meaning the body is able to produce energy in a lot more of an effective way with a significantly lesser value of negative byproduct. So when you're comparing apples to apples, ketones burn a lot cleaner, give you a lot more energy with a lot less negative impact on the body, meaning your inflammatory levels don't have to elevate because they don't have to go around scrounging up all the reactive oxygen species and the rogue oxygens that are floating around your body. Next up, I want to talk about something known as 2-deoxyglucose. 2-deoxyglucose is something that stops glucose metabolism in the brain. And recently, researchers at UCSF started taking a look at brain inflammation and the relationship with ketone bodies and, of course, 2-deoxyglucose. What they did is they took rats that had high levels of brain inflammation. Okay, maybe they had an illness or maybe they instilled brain inflammation by utilizing something like carrageenan or something like that that usually will cause inflammation. But that's not important. What they found is that by introducing 2-deoxyglucose and shutting down glucose metabolism in their brain and defaulting over to ketone bodies for fuel, 
there was a dramatic reduction in inflammation in the brain. So much to the point that they went from a chronic sick level of inflammation in the brain down to a standard level of inflammation that you would find in a very, very healthy person. Pretty powerful just by having ketones in the body and restricting glucose metabolism. Brain inflammation is not something that's easy to control. You see, the brain has its own level of inflammation that's separate from the body. So to be able to speak specifically to the brain is very, very powerful. And when we find that ketones have the ability to do that, we may just be unlocking the key to feeling a lot better in a lot of different ways. Additionally, this also balanced out the electron communication of something with the NAD and NADH system within the brain. This is a very, very complex system that goes far beyond even what I know when it comes down to electrons and it comes down to energy metabolism. But the fact is, it balanced the system out. So there wasn't an overstimulation of electricity in the brain that would ordinarily trigger inflammation. So I hope that this clears some stuff up and I hope it helps you understand that ketosis, even though you're eating high fat, unhealthy foods, could seriously be effective when it comes down to reducing overall levels of inflammation, not just in the body, but in the brain as well. As always, Jigsaw, make sure to keep your body in check and keep your minerals in check as well so that you can make sure all those electrons are working right. So head on over and check out Magnesium SRT by Jigsaw. You can just click on the link and get yours today. I'll see you soon.